Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we're going to be talking about the recent US attack on Syria in which more than 50 cruise missiles were fired. For this we have with us Prabir Purkaistha, News Click chief editor and expert on international affairs. So uh, Prabir, what is the impact of this US attack on Syria? I think this is a qualitatively new uh, situation because if you remember earlier Obama had threatened to go to war against Assad and at that time also it was a chemical attack in Ghouta near Damascus which was the issue and at the last moment the US backed off as did the, uh, the French and the British. Now this time Trump who initially had said that he's going to look at a new policy seems to have carried through what Obama did not, what Obama at the last moment had backed off which is take action, military actions in Syria against the Assad government. This is it seems, appears, 69 Tomahawk missiles, which are really cruise missiles, have been fired at an airport in Syria. Interestingly enough, this is the airport which has been very active against the ISIS. So the argument that the US has been given, Assad is not very serious against ISIS, this is the airport from which ISIS was being attacked and this is the airport then the US has attacked. So are they in fact helping ISIS? That's a key question that comes up. Because Deir Asor, one of the cities which is surrounded, where the US has bombed, had bombed the Syrian troops, in fact helping the ISIS over there, that is still under siege and in re recently the Syrians have made some gains over there. So is it in fact trying to help the ISIS retain its position in Deir Asor? Is that the reason? We don't know. But it is also true that yes, the chemical attacks that have taken place or the chemical incident that has taken place is supposed to have killed 100 to 200 people, horrendous pictures have emerged, little babies dying, so horrendous picture, yes, true. But who has done it? The US has no authority to take, take unilateral war action against any other country. Syria is a sovereign country. An attack of this nature is essentially an act of war and is a war crime as per international law. So the fact that the US doesn't seem to see itself bound by any international norms, there is no Security Council resolution, there is no consensus what of, on what has happened, that the US should take action. I think that's a very serious issue. Now, let's also look at the bigger picture. You have Russia supporting the Assad government, you have Iran over there, you have on the other side the Gulf uh, monarchies, you have Saudi Arabia, you have Turkey, you have Israel, and the Western powers on the other side ranged we don't know with who. We have also the Al-Qaeda which is the Jabahat al-Nusra now renamed into something else, ISIS which are avowedly everybody's enemies. Okay, But in spite of that we have seen the Western powers repeatedly along with Saudis, Turkey and Israel essentially range themselves with Jabahat al-Nusra or with ISIS as the case may be in order to weaken as they see their main enemy which is Iran Syria, Hezbollah in the region and of course Russia which is the one which is at the moment supporting them. So this is a very dangerous situation because you have the US which is of course a nuclear power, enormous military strength and you have Russia also militarily strong, has nuclear weapons also in Syria with the Assad government. What is the response they will make? What is the response Assad government will make? Can they respond against American forces. American forces are there now with the Kurdish uh, groups in Syria. Again, something that they, they have not taken uh, clearance either from the Security Council, United Nations or from the Syrian government. So this makes this uh, situation fraught with danger and if it is one of a kind, something they have done as a showmanship just so Trump can say, I'm a strong president, I'm not in the uh, in the alliance with Russia, I'm asserting my independence. If that is so, it's a one of a kind act issue, then maybe things will cool off a little. But it has certainly ruptured the relation with the United States and Russia, made reapproachment, which could have happened under Trump, that I think has been made more difficult. And we are seeing a head to head clash between two nuclear powers. Uh, so as you mentioned the chemical attacks, uh, what uh, what is the information that we have on this and the impact of this attack which the US is seeing done by the Syrian government? No evidence has been shown which proves who has done the attack. 
there are two narratives that are there. One narrative is that this was a Syrian government attack and they dropped chemical weapons in this, in this particular uh, town or area and then so many people have died. This is one narrative. The second narrative which the Syrian government has said, which the Russian uh, sources have said, uh, Russian government has said openly, is that a bomb would have been dropped which hit a munitions, a chemical storage which the Al-Qaeda forces were holding over there and it is this dispersal of the chemicals that they had stored which has caused the death. So there are two different narratives. Media seems to have discounted completely what Russia is saying, saying that Al-Qaeda does not have the capability of holding or developing sarin, the nerve gas which is supposed to have caused the deaths. Now again, was it sarin? Was it some other chemicals? We don't really know again. Unless there is conclusive medical evidence which is out of, after proper investigation, very difficult to say this. But yes, some of the pictures seem to show that there, it could be some kind of a chemicals that have caused this, this, this death. So one is what is the chemical? What, how did it happen? This is one part of it. Second part of it which has come out again widely, that white helmet which is the one which has taken the video, White Helmet is a creation of the Americans, the British and the French governments. They have given it public information, not giving anything out of my, uh, spinning anything out of my head. Hundred million dollars worth of money. And that's what White Helmet is supported by. They have this fancy GoPro camera stuck to their helmets which takes all these videos. And they seem to be a video agency as much as what they claim, a civil uh, defense agency. So they have created all these videos which are used widely and they are used widely for disinformation and quite often for manufactured news. So how trustworthy is White Helmet in creating such videos? How good is the testimony is the other question. And there is a Swedish Doctors for Human Rights who have claimed that this video shows that White Helmet either does not know how to handle babies which have, who have been hurt or have been injured in such an operation or they are willfully killing the small kids as a part of creating a video. So both of these would be very damaging if it is true and uh, if, this, if this really is true, this is itself a crime against human humanity. So I think the picture is too quick, it is too uh, complex at the moment for us within two or three days to establish who is the actual culprit in this case. I would also like to comment that there is now enough evidence that ISIS and Al-Qaeda both have the ability to manufacture chemical weapons. The US has certified that yes, this is true. In fact, a year back, there's huge concerns that there could be nerve gas released in the uh, underground in UK. And the, there's a huge number of reports coming out that this is the fear that they have. There is also documentary evidence that ISIS has the capability to manufacture sarin and so does Al-Qaeda. So given this kind of scenario to argue that only Syrian government has the ability to use chemical weapons and uh, Al-Qaeda Al or the ISIS do not have such capability is utter nonsense. Now with Trump in power, uh what do you have to say about the US that has changed its political position in regard with Syria? Well, we actually see a continuity with the policies that Obama had and what Hillary Clinton was proposing, which is a hard line against the Assad government, bomb them, go to war. It seems that Trump is continuing the same policies. So all the rhetoric we saw before the elections or during the elections seems to have come to naught. And either Trump has decided that this is too risky and the peace is just not worth it, it's better to kowtow to the neocon establishment in the United States or this was just electoral rhetoric and he really had no other plans except to continue what I would call is real, the imperialist policies of the United States which is war in West Asia, supporting Saudi Arabia and others and it's essentially over control of oil, control over oil and support to Israel's existence, any peace any kind of forces like Hezbollah, Syria, Iran are threats to Israel and the domination of they have over oil. So in that sense, it seems to be the continuity that has overtaken Trump's policies. And if some of us had hopes that Trump would prove to be more of a real, real politique 
and would try to come to some understanding over West Asia and with Russia. I think that is now for that's something that we can't expect. Thank you so much for uh, talking to us. And as these things progress, we'll come back to you. Thank you for watching News Click. This is all the time we have.